So today we are uh, ready for a new uh, part of the curriculum. Uh, we'll start on chapter seven uh, regarding the uh, what we call push and pull control uh, production control systems. Uh, you probably have heard about uh, the terms uh, the MRP, uh, Material Requirement Planning, uh, which is a typical uh, push production control system. You have a plan and you are uh, well planning everything from uh, out from uh, the the forecast or the orders you have, uh, and. The more uh, well, the, the opposite uh, uh, philosophy is uh, uh, the so-called pull production control system, where you have the term just I, uh, just in time GIT, which means that you are pulling everything, materials and uh, workers and everything, uh, when you have one particular order. Uh, we will focus in this chapter about uh, the techniques for uh, for the push, the the MRP. Uh, when you actually know or uh, pretend to know some uh, uh, the demand in in the coming period, and uh, will not focus too much on the the pull and the, the just in time because there you don't have so many uh, models, uh, but you should know about the difference and the different uh, philosophy. Um, of course, there are in um, uh, in different types of uh, uh, of situation, different uh, markets, products, and so on. Uh, the best strategy will be uh, more like uh, one, uh, one of these, either you have an MRP situation or a just-in-time situation, and often you have a situation where you should have some, some adjustment and find some uh, a balance between these two, two uh, philosophies. Uh, I will first, uh, today I will well, skip uh, the few to uh, first sub chapter, that is the first one, with some, some theory. I will jump directly to some of the methods because in problem number four in the uh, assignment, you need to use some of these MRP uh, methods. So I will present them today and probably come back to some of the, uh, of the more general uh, theory uh, next time. Uh, and then uh, in one week, I will also. Uh, well, we'll present what is left in, in chapter 7, and then we'll start on, uh, on chapter 8 about uh, uh, scheduling, which is the last part of the curriculum in, uh, in this course. Uh, but now first, uh, I will present the so-called lot sizing problem, which is described in, in chapter 7. And the lot sizing problem is a problem where you have to decide which period you should produce or eventual order when you know the demand, but the demand is not at a fixed rate, but it is variable. Uh, you might have orders for the coming weeks, for example. So you have some orders in, in one week, more orders in another week, and less orders in, in a third week, for example. Uh, and then it's not so obvious uh, how you should uh, uh, plan the, the production or, or, or the ordering, because the demand is not at a fixed rate, as we have seen uh, earlier in uh, chapter 4 and also in chapter 5, even, even if in chapter 5 uh, we had some stochasticity, but the variation were along uh, a fixed rate. Now, we will, have, uh, we will have to set up a plan for production, eventually order, when you know you have a, a list of the, um, uh, of the orders in the, in the coming periods and uh, you want to find what is most uh, effective. So, we'll just jump here to well, slide number nine, maybe, uh, where you present some of the lot sizing schemes for the MRP system. And the m simplest is the so called lot for lot, uh, abbreviated with the L4L. Uh, if we look at this problem, I will. Uh, will define first or uh, describe one particular lot sizing problem in five weeks, which will be used as the general uh, uh, example where I will present the different uh, techniques. And here we can assume that we have a demand for five weeks. So we have the period number one. Two, 
3, 4, and 5, describing the 5 weeks. And in each of these weeks, you have a demand given. And this could be actual orders, or it could be uh, well some uh, uh, forecasting techniques, or, or uh, uh, well, you, you at least you, you pretend to have an idea about what will the actual demand be in uh, these weeks, and, you, and it is not at a fixed rate as we are used to in the uh, previous models we have seen in this course. So here you might have a demand in week number one, which is 18. In week number two, you will have a demand of 30. Then in week number three, 42. Week number four, only five. And week number five, 20. This is now the given demand for the five weeks. And we will try to, uh, to, to check different uh, techniques to plan the production or eventually ordering of this, uh, this item, which will minimize our cost. And as usual, we will have a given cost for a setup or ordering. And we will have a given cost for uh, holding or storing inventory. So here, we can assume in this example that we have a value of k, the setup cost or the ordering cost, which is 80. So if you are placing an order or set up production, you have to pay 80 of, of this currency. And in addition, you have holding cost per item, which is two. So if you are storing one item from one period to the next, it will cost you two of this uh, currency. Uh, so now we can well, we can first try to check what is the, the cost of this simplest, so-called lot-for-lot lot technique. Uh, it means that the requirements are met on a period-by-period -period basis as they arise in the explosion calculus. So we'll come back to the explosion calculus, uh, which is a description how we can uh, find this demand in a uh, uh, production situation where you have different levels of, of productions and different levels of components. But we'll, we'll come back to that uh, probably uh, uh, next week. But here we can assume that we have the given demand for the five periods uh, in the, f the five coming periods. So here, if we have a lot for lot, uh, lot sizing, it means that we have to pro produce or order exactly what we need in each of these periods. So then the production will be 18 in week 1, 30 in week 2, 42, 5, and 20. And then we can also look at the remaining stock after each week, which is of course zero here. So you don't have any storage cost because you will produce exactly what you need in each week, but you have to pay a setup cost or an ordering cost for every week. So the cost of this lot for lot strategy will then be well setup cost of 80 here, plus 80, plus 80, plus 80, plus 80, 80 times 5. So we have setup cost in each of these, four, uh, these five weeks, which means five times 80, which is 400. <coughs> so this is one way to meet this, uh, uh, this demand, this demand which is varying for the five, five weeks. Produce exactly what you need in each of, of the four weeks, e each of the five weeks. So this is uh, what we can call one extreme strategy which uh, is uh, focusing only on production and not storing anything from one week to the next one. We can also look at another strategy, which is the, in the opposite direction, which means that you should not produce uh, more times than necessary. That means that you have to produce everything in week number one. If you are producing 
well, a total here. The total demand here will be 115. 18 plus 30 plus 42 plus 5 plus 20, 115. And then the other uh, strategy, produce once, means that you produce 115 here. That means no production in week number 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, but then you have to store inventory from one week to the next. Here you're producing 115. You are using only 18, means that you have 97 left. So you're using 30 of these in week number two. You have 67 left. Then you're using 42, you have 25 left. Using five, you are 20 left. And then you're losing the, using the last 20 in week five and have nothing left on stock at the end of period number five. And then, of course, the produce once strategy will have a cost which is 1 times 80. You have only set up cost for the first week, but you have to find the sum of the stock here because you're storing 97 items in one week, and then you're storing 67 in another week, 25 in even another week, and 20, and so on. And then if you sum all these together, you will have a sum of 194. This is the sum, 194. And as you can see here, these 194 items have to be multiplied by 2, because this is the storage cost, the hauling cost from one week to, to the next. So here you have setup cost, which is 80 one setup in the first period, plus 194 multiplied by 2, which will be a total cost of 468, which is much, much more expensive than the, the lot for lot strategy, because uh, you, have to, you have so much uh, cost of storing inventory in this strategy. So these are now what we can call the two uh, extreme strategies. One, produce exactly what you need in each week. And another, produce everything in the first week and then store to the week when you actually need this, um, uh, these items. Uh, but of course, as usual, the extreme strategies are usually not the best possible uh, strategy. So now we will look at different ways to make up a production plan for, well, first for this small example and then in, in general for even larger examples, and which we, you should also use in, in your assignment number uh, three and, uh, and problem number four. Uh, we can also, one possible strategy is to try to find or try to use the EOQ formula. Even if here well, the demand is certainly not at a fixed rate, and uh, the variation is uh, so much, so you cannot see that the, uh, you, you can use the stochastic uh, methods uh, either. But, uh, well, we can try to see what if we will try to adjust the EOQ formula to this particular situation. Uh, and then we know that the EOQ formula, to find the optimal Q, we will need 2 times the K multiplied by the demand divided by H, hauling cost. In this case, we have to make sure that we're using the same time unit for the demand and for the hauling cost. The hauling cost in this case is given per week, storing from one week or one period to the next period. And then we need to find, well, the average demand, the typical demand in one week. The demand is varying very much from 5 up to 42, but to find the average demand, we can put this line to, to, to say that this is the average demand. Okay, this will now be the total of 115 divided by the number of periods. 
which is 23. And with an, a weekly demand of 23, we can easily find that the optimal Q, if we had a, uh, if we had a fixed rate, it will be 2 multiplied by 80 multiplied by 23 divided by 2, the holding cost for one week. Very important when you're using the EOQ formula, use the same time unit for the demand and for the, the holding cost. But in this case, we will find that the optimal Q uh, would be 43. So you should order or produce 43 when you, you are placing an, an, an order or setting up a production. So let's now see what would happen in this situation if we are using an order size of 43. Well, we start in, in uh, period number one, 43. We are using 18, we have a demand of 18 in period number one, which means that you have 25 left. But 25 is not enough to meet the demand of 30 in period number two, which means that you need a new setup, a new production in that period. Uh, and then 43 plus 25 is 68, which you have available in that period. You have a demand of 30, means that you have 38 left after this period. And 38 is not enough to meet the demand of 42 in period number three. Uh, so you need to have a new setup, new production in period number three. Uh, and then you have 43, and you have a stock of 38, and you have a demand of 42, which means that after this period you have 39 left on stock. And 39 is certainly enough to meet the demand in period 5, so then you don't need a setup. You will have 34 left. And 34 will be enough to meet the demand in period number 5, so you don't need a setup here. And you have 14 left on stock. So here the cost for this particular strategy will be a setup cost of 1, 2, 3 times. 80 and the storage cost in this case well 25 plus 38 plus 39 34 and 14 will be a total of 150 150 multiplied by 2 and this is of course well very expensive this is 300 plus 240, it will be a total of 540, which is much more than any of these two strategies. But we can certainly see here, when the demand is given like this, when we know the demand, there is no need to produce 43 here, because you also know that you will have a new production in the next period. So we can easily adjust the EOQ uh, strategy here by not using the exact value of the EOQ, but using this value to de uh, decide which period you should have a production, and then adjust the exact production size to meet the demand for the period that you are going to produce for. So we know that we will have to produce in period number one. We need a total of 18. And we also know that we will produce in period number two, so then we don't need to produce any more than 18 in this period. And then you will have no left on stock. And similar, in period number two, you have a demand of 30. You know that you will have to produce again in the next period, which means that the total number of items to produce is 30. And you will have no left on stock. And so in period number three, you will produce 42, of course, which is, uh, is the demand in this period, 
but you won't have a production in period number four and five, which means that the total number of units to produce will be the sum of the period which you want to, uh, uh, to meet with the production in, in this uh, uh, period here. So 42 plus 5 plus 20 will be 67. total production of yeah, well the demand of course should should still still be 42 5 and 20 the total production here is 67 which means that you don't have to produce in the next two periods but then you will have 25 left on stock after this period you will use five of them in period number four. You will then you will have 20 left, and these 20 will be used in, in period number five. So here you have a total stock of 45, 20, and 25, and you have a setup still three times, but now the adjusted EOQ strategy will only give us 45 units multiplied by two, which is a total of 330. So here, the adjusted EOQ strategy will give us a cost or a plan with a cost of 330. Use, well, find the average production by, uh, in each of the, the periods. Use that production to decide about the, or to find a corresponding EOQ value if you had a fixed rate demand, which of course you don't have. But this number can be used to determine which weeks, which periods you need to have a setup or to place an order. And then you can easily, when you know the demand, you can adjust the size of that, that order to meet exactly the demand for the periods you want to cover with this particular order or this particular setup. So now we have seen the two extreme strategies, the lot for lot, which is producing exactly what you need in each of the periods. You had the production or the produce once, which is producing once and for all in the first period. And then you have to store for the full time horizon for the periods you want to cover. And then find some strategy which is well, usually will be between these two extreme strategies which is the adjusted EOQ uh, method which has a lower cost here of 330. Question? Setup cost three times because you have setup in this week, in this week and this week. Well, uh, if you uh, you don't uh, produce 43 each week, uh, yeah, uh, the, la the last one, then you had 43 in this week and you were storing inventory. You had to produce again in this week and again in this week. So you had a set of cost every week, but then at this point you had enough items on stock to meet the demand in period number four and period number five. So you didn't have production in week number four and five. So you will use this number to determine, looking at the demand, and find out which weeks or which periods do you need to have production. And then when you know which week, you can adjust the exact size of the production to meet the demand for these weeks. So now we have seen, well, two extreme strategies. One adjusted EOQ uh, method, but for these types of problem, you have several so-called heuristics. And a heuristic is uh, known to be, well, we can call it a rule of, of thumb. You can say that uh, a heuristic is a way to uh, try to find a good strategy, which is not necessarily the optimal one, but it will usually be a much better strategy than these extreme strategies or random strategies. Uh, or uh, so these methods, which we will look at now, will usually give you a pretty good results on such problems. So
So, yeah, this is a description of the lot sizing problem, which I have now tried to, to explain. And then we have also tried to use this EOQ formula by defining the um, well, fi finding the uh, corresponding order size if the problem were uh, had a demand of a fixed rate. Uh, but now we will look at this silver meal heuristic, which is also one uh, sub problem in your uh, your um, assignment in in problem number four, and I will also present the well some other heuristics the part period balancing, and also the least unit cost heuristics. And then I will show how we can uh, define this problem, this lot sizing problem, as an LP problem, as we are known with, uh, from the aggregate uh, planning. And we can find the optimal solution for these types of problem, uh, which then will be, well, the proven optimal solution. But of course, as usual, the optimal solution is only valid if you know for certain that, that all the parameters are, are correct. Uh, and this is not, uh, well, often not the case. So then you can, well, th these uh, heuristics, silver meal and least unit cost and part period balancing are still uh, well, quite commonly used, even if you have a way to um, to find the, the optimal solution because of the uncertainty of the of the parameters, and this is also well. Here we are given five weeks of um, uh, the demand in five weeks, but in real life this is a problem which is well. You can you can after the first week you might get the uh, exact uh, amount for week number six again, uh, which might be different and might uh, well disturb the plan you actually have found in, in the first week. So this is a dynamic process. You need to update every time you get new information. <coughs> you will have to, to update these plans. And that, that is why these uh, uh, heuristics still are commonly uh, used to try to determine the correct order size or the correct uh, <coughs> size of the production uh, batches when, when you are, uh, are producing yourself. But OK, let's now look at this uh, silver meal method. Uh, it is named after the two persons, silver and meal, who <coughs> first defined this uh, method. can use this table because uh, this example will be used for, for all these, uh, these heuristics and we will get different uh, uh, solution and we will now try to uh, compare the cost of, of each of these solutions. <coughs> and uh, the idea of this silver mill heuristic is to try to determine the average cost per period as a function of the number of periods that the current order has to span. How many? Because Well, we saw with the EOQ example that we, when we know the exact demand here, uh, we should not produce more than we actually need in the periods we want to produce for. There's no need to produce more. If you will have a production or a setup in one period, you should have a stock of zero in the previous period because everything more than zero will then be a cost, uh, an, <coughs> an unnecessary cost of storing uh, inventory. So uh, we will now define by this silver meal method, we will define the function, uh, as the cost function as the average holding and setup cost per period if the current order will span one number of periods. And then we define the si silver mill We will define the function C of T 
as the cost function. And the cost function will now be the, uh, the average holding and setup cost per period when you are uh, ordering or producing four T periods. And then it's well, very easy here to see that the CO1 producing for one period. Then you will have a cost of 80, a setup cost, divided by the number of periods, which is 1. So this cost will be 80. If you are starting in period number 1, producing for only one period, you will have a total cost of 80 per period. And then look at period number 2, the cost function for two periods. Still, you will have a setup cost. You need to have a setup in the first period, which is 80. And if you are producing for two periods, you have to produce 18 plus 30, which is 48. And you have to store 30 of them for, for one period. You have a demand of 18, but still you have to store 30. So 80 in setup cost and 30 at a cost of 2 divided by two periods which will give us a value, in this case it is 80 plus 2 times 30 divided by 2 will be 70. And we can try to find the next cost function per period, CO3. If you are producing for three periods, 18 plus 30 plus 42, you have still only one setup. You have to store 30 items for one period at a cost of two. But you also have to store 42 items at a cost of two for two periods, from period one to period number three. So this will be 42 at a cost of 2 and multiplied by 2 because you have to store them for 2 periods. And then the average will be formed by dividing by 3. Uh, and this will now give us a cost of 102.67. And the idea behind this silver mill method is to choose the number of periods which will give us the lowest average cost. And the lowest cost here will be 70, which means we should produce in period one, we should produce the demand for the coming two periods. So here we should produce 48, store 30 of them, and no production in period number two. And then you don't have anything left because you have exactly 30 on stock, which will meet the demand. And then we have to start all over again from period number three. Well, we are in period number three. The CO1 will still be the same because this will be produce 42 which will meet exactly the demand in the third period. And then the next option, produce for two periods, means that you have a setup cost of 80. You have to produce 47 and store five items to the next period at a cost of two. Divide by two to get the average and 90 divided by 2 should be 45, which is lower than the previous one. This means that it's better to produce here in for two periods than produce for only one. And then look at also the CO3. Try to include the demand in period number 5. Produce a total of 67 in period number 3. 
then you have a setup cost of 80. You have to store five items in one period to a cost of two, and you have to store 20 items in two periods to a cost of two, divide by three to get the average, and the average here will be 56.7. And since this number is smaller than this number, we should produce for only two periods in period number three. Produce 47, store five of them to the next period, and then no production in period number four, and no stock left in period number four. And then it's, well, only one period left, means that you should produce 20 and no stock left to the next period. Uh, this is in, yeah, a question? Yeah, the average here, yeah. yeah but if you fail to do the four five, then you have a set of stocks in the last one or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be more than Well uh, it, this this is uh, this is a heuristic yeah. uh, and it's uh, what we call a myopic, it can only see one period in, in advance. And that's why we cannot guarantee mm -hmm. that this is the optimal solution. And we will see different heuristics in a while, which actually will give us different solution. And we cannot say that the silver meal heuristic is better than the part period balancing, for example, because in some examples, this will give the best answer. In some other examples, another uh, heuristic will give another uh, or, or, a or the best answer in, in another situation. So these are uh, examples on techniques which you should learn, which can be, be used when you come into to, to real life. Uh, and you will also learn the, how to define this problem and find the exact optimal solution by solving it to optimality by Lingo or another uh, optimizer, for example. Uh, but anyway, this uh, silver mill heuristic will then give us a total cost, which is three setups, one, two and three at a cost of 80. And here you have 35, uh, a total 30 plus five at a cost of two. Which is a total of 310. 240 in setup cost and 70 in holding cost. So the silver meal heuristic, SM, will here find an even better solution than the EOQ um, or the adjusted EOQ formula because, well, we look at the, the average and choose the number of periods to produce for, which will give us the lowest average value. But as mentioned, this uh, myopic, it looks only one period ahead at a time. So we cannot guarantee that, that this is the exact uh, optimal solution. Uh, I will also uh, I will <coughs> write the general formula here for the silver meal heuristic. Because uh, now, uh, as we have seen, we will look one period ahead at a time. And we can say that the general formula can be written like this. The C cost function of 1j, which is a, the variable, the number of periods ahead we want to plan for, can be found by the k value, the setup cost, plus uh, the holding cost, or yeah, the holding cost for the next period which we can denote as the R2, next period ahead, plus 
two times the holding cost of the R3, which is the period two periods ahead from the peri current period we are in. And plus what we now see as the, yeah, I need a new line, I think. <coughs> plus the J minus one, which is now the number of periods we want to store for. Because if you are producing for five periods, then you have to multiply the demand in this period by four, which is J minus one, because you have to store them in <coughs> four periods. So J minus one multiplied by the holding cost and multiplied by R for period number J. And of course, this should be divided by J, number of periods to get average. So this is the general formula, the setup cost plus the holding cost once for the next period, plus the holding cost twice for the period two, two periods, uh, the demand two periods ahead, and up to the periods, uh, the J minus one, which is the number of periods you want to store the, the inventory multiplied by the holding cost and multiplied by the number of items that you actually want to, to store. So, this was the silver meal heuristic, which is, uh, yeah, will use the, the average demand and look at, or the, uh, the average cost and look at the number of periods to produce for, which will give us the lowest average cost. And I will now present the next heuristic, which is slightly different, but not too, too different. Uh, and this is called the least unit cost, and this is uh, well, use much of the, the same ideas, but instead of J, the number of periods, it will divide by the number of units. Uh, we take a break now, 15 minutes, and then I will present the least unit cost, which is more based on the, much of the same ideas as the silver mill method. <coughs> 